The rationale for targeting cyclin-dependent kinases 4, 6 is really quite interesting because we've known that the cell cycle is important in tumor cell growth forever. I mean, it, it, that was sort of the basis of understanding how rapidly growing cells were an issue and how they sort of lose control over the cell cycle uh, and lose the normal regulatory factors. Of course, in the recent years, we've understood this better, but I think what's been most interesting recently is the role that estrogen plays and the estrogen receptor pathway in the cell cycle and the cell cycling in cancer cells. So cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors, of course, were of interest for a long time in the treatment of cancer because of the importance of the cell cycle, but they had a lot of off-target toxicity. It's actually on target, but normal cell toxicity where you would get uh, low blood counts, cytopenias, that were a problem. But with these more selective cyclin-dependent kinase 4-6 inhibitors and an understanding of how CDK4-6 and cyclin D1 and RB interact, it actually led to an interest in trying to understand how those inhibitors would work in breast cancer cells. So really elegant preclinical work done by Dennis Slayman at Rich Finn at UCLA and cell lines that already had been well characterized showed that these agents could suppress cancer cell growth in luminal-like cancers and HER2-positive cancers. And at the same time, there was preclinical work showing the relationship between ER and signaling through the estrogen receptor and CDK4-6. And so the rationale really came about from the fact that CDK4-6 inhibitors could actually potentially have single agent activity, but that more importantly, estrogen could actually overcome that inhibition in preclinical settings. And so combining an estrogen antagonist or an aromatase inhibitor, for example, with a CDK4-6 inhibitor made perfect sense for treating these luminal-like or hormone receptor-positive cancers. So we've seen a really revolution in the treatment paradigm for patients with hormone receptor-positive metastatic breast cancer where CDK4-6 inhibitors have really impacted our treatment planning and our guidelines as well. In fact, the use of CDK4-6 inhibitors has been incorporated into guidelines uh, nationally and internationally. So what's happened is that we understand that if you give a CDK4-6 inhibitor with a variety of different hormonal agents that you can improve progression-free survival and response rates. And in many situations, either you don't adversely impact health-related quality of life or you improve aspects of health-related quality of life at the same time. So based on these data, the agents have been incorporated into both the first and subsequent line therapy combinations with hormone therapy. So the impact in terms of the treatment paradigm is that now when you have a patient who has hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer, the decision is, I'm gonna give hormone therapy, should I also give a CDK4-6 inhibitor? And in most cases, that answer is yes in the first or subsequent line setting depending on the individual patient setting and situation and the organs that are involved.